My guest today is Guy Royce. Guy, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's always fun. What are you doing these days? Oh, you know, a little of this, a little of that. A oh, little for bit a of... living, I should be more explicit. Oh, for a living, <laughs> you know. Um, well, I, I was thinking about becoming an Uber driver, but, you know. <laughs> There's big money uh, that, that seems like the retirement plan for me. No, <laughs> uh, no I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm at Redis. I'm a developer advocate there, and so uh, I go out and talk about Redis stuff and uh, write blog posts about Redis stuff and uh, do videos about Redis stuff and and it's pretty, you know, it's it's like a there's a, that push and pull of being a developer advocate because it's some of it you go out and you push the stuff and say, hey, you know, Redis does these other things you didn't know about, and then there's the pull where you're gathering stuff from the community, like online forums and Discord and stuff, and bringing that back to the product team. And so, it's a pretty good Very gig. Cool. Uh, suits yeah, my temperament. Like I noticed that uh, you know you speak at conferences as part of this, but you don't always speak about Redis. Sometimes you speak about just fun projects that you're enjoying and you want to share with other folks, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, I've, got, I've got something I've been doing uh, of late that's uh, fun, and I mean, I did shoehorn a little bit of Redis into it, but you know, but <laughs> I, I'm not really going to talk about that today necessarily. Um, um, I've been playing around with a uh, software-defined radio. Okay, I had uh, never heard of that term until I talked with you at Code Mesh about it. What yeah. is it? Software-defined radio is well. It, it, this is this is a software-defined radio. I don't know if that, how well that's showing up on camera. Let me adjust my lighting there. Now it's, it's probably a way too it's bright. a piece of hardware. It is a piece of hardware. Uh, what it is is it's basically looks like an oversized thumb drive, mm -hmm. and on one end it's got a USB dongle right here, and on the other end it's got a little SMA antenna adapter, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's a radio that you plug into your computer. Um, oh. Like if you get a regular radio, like you know, um, a like a like an AM FM radio to right. listen to, or or like a ham radio for tran you know listening and transmitting, uh, it's got a whole bunch of circuitry in there that's for tuning and um, for demodulating like the signal from whatever encoding it is. So like if it's AM radio transmission, it's amplitude modulation. If it's mm -hmm. FM, it's you know frequency modulation. And you need to decode all that or demodulate it into something. There's a whole bunch of circuitry in your radio that does that right. uh with software defined radio all that circuitry is gone and then your software does it instead and so that means that these little, these little things here are cheap and okay. inexpensive and simple devices that you can you can point them at a frequency and then it will like take a wide swath of bandwidth and send it all to your computer and then your computer can use software to decode the signals on it Th this uh, bandwidth is that am and fm uh signals from the airwaves or yeah, yeah, it's, it's, than, is it more than that too? Is it also the uh, ham radio stuff? It's actually depending on the software defined radio. Uh, this particular one that I'm holding up here is it's like twenty five, thirty dollars on Amazon, and um, it will pick up pretty much everything from AM radio down all the way, almost all the way down to the floor, uh, up to about two gigahertz. What do you mean by uh, the floor? Uh, zero hertz. Okay. Right. So um, it, it doesn't go all the way down. I, I don't know what the absolute bottom is on that particular one but it's it's way low it's below okay. am radio mm, and so okay. this will pick up am radio this will pick up uh, ham ray uh, ham radio operators this will pick up cb this will pick up um, um ham radio operators working at higher frequencies um fm broadcast radio uh what about, citi what about citizen band radio is that still a thing yeah yeah it is uh there it's that's around uh like 25 megahertz and uh, you can certainly pick that up. I've, I've listened to it. Um, it's entertaining. Uh, I, uh, they were really popular <laughs> when I was in junior high school. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I remember back in the 70s, they were uh, quite the thing to have. And uh, mm -hmm. there, there, there was a whole culture around it. The, the culture on CBs kind of diminished over the years. But it, it, there's still people out there that are into it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, this, these little devices pick up the whole spectrum. And you need, you need the appropriate antenna for different frequencies you're operating at. But... Uh, you can bring them in as into into the software and tune them in and listen to them or uh, you know whatever's going on, um, and so it's pretty cool. Uh, I've been using it to uh, listen to uh, ham radio operators um, all over the world actually, um, hmm. and listen to shortwave radio. Um, I, I have an antenna. I could go grab the antenna. I'm not going to grab the antenna. But I got this loop antenna which is in the closet behind me back there. Okay. Uh, for picking up uh, what's called HF high frequency. So high frequency is higher than medium frequency. Medium frequency is where like AM radio is at, like okay. you know, a, a thousand kilohertz, that, that sort of range. 
Right. HF is high frequency, which is kind of microwave or shortwave. Mm, okay. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that will bounce off the atmosphere, and so you can pick up people really far away. So I've got this loop antenna that I set up in my living room, or in my dining room, at, at, just at the window, and I picked up a shortwave radio station broadcasting from Lhasa, Tibet. Sweet. Uh, that, that, that's, and that's impressive because I'm in Columbus, Ohio, not like in, you know, Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> So, so wait, uh, is this a, is this like a repeater then? That, so your your antenna in your dining room picks up the, the 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 things from Tibet, and then it sends it to that little device. Is that what's happening? Yeah, the antenna picks it up, and then it goes down the wire and into the little device, and then my device will allow me to tune it, and then I can decode the audio. Oh, okay. uh, I, I can you know and and listen to it just like I would if I had like a little physical device that would listen to shortwave radio. Hmm. Um, and so. And this means that, you know, you can record it and you can uh, monitor different frequencies and do, like, switching and stuff like that and listen to all kinds of cool stuff on radio. Cool. Um, so it's kind of neat in its own right because there's, like, a whole bunch of neat stuff on shortwave radio to listen to. Um, at higher frequencies, uh, uh, at, like, um, VHF and UHF, which stands for very high frequency and ultra high frequency. I did not know that. Part. Yeah. So, yeah, you got medium, you got, like... Uh, LF for low frequency, MF for medium frequency, uh, HF for high frequency, and then it's like, well, back when they were establishing the radio standards, uh, you know, four uh, megahertz was considered high frequency. Ah, and, I see. and now, you know, VHF, like TV and radio is, it, it, VHF is considered to be 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. Yeah. And so that'd well, be like, so it'd be like, you know, time. My Local FM radio days. station. I'm thinking my junior high school days. Go VHF was channels like one through twelve, right. and UHF was channel fifty and twenty. And yeah, so. and then of and course, those were like, in those bands as well. MF. The meaning of MF has changed since Samuel L. Jackson. Adios. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had that same thought, but I didn't know if we wanted to go there here on the podcast or not. <laughs> it's PG thirteen show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll, we'll allude to it without saying it. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually really cool, and there's all these signals out there being broadcast. Like I, I've used these a pair of these and some antennas, and I can listen to uh, police scanners in my in the state of Ohio here, where cool. I live. Uh, that's perfectly legal in the United States. If you are in other countries, that may not be legal. So, mm. uh, generally, uh, in the U.S., actually, I think in all circumstances, listening to anything that's broadcast in the clear is legal and permissible. Okay. Uh, if you're using some sort of like, if something's sent that's encrypted and you're trying to break the encryption, then that falls into like illegal hacking rules. Um, there's um, a noted exception around, uh, I think, pagers, where well, the, the rule is is you're allowed to listen to anything, but you're not necessarily allowed to share it. So it's intended for individuals to listen to. I so I can listen to police scanners, but I can't record all the police scanners and put them on the internet for everyone to listen to. Oh, interesting. Um, I actually had some experience last week. There was a shooting at Michigan State University. I have a lot of friends there, and people were yeah. sending me links to the police scanners to listen in on I can, well, this maybe developing I'm wrong about that then. Because there are, you're right, there are sites that do police scanner listening. That you can, so. Yeah, it was just a software. There was no hardware involved at all. I can listen on my phone or yeah. uh, uh, on my computer. Yeah. Let, me, let me clarify the rule then, as I understand it, uh, because... It, now that I'm talking about this out loud, I'm thinking, well, you know, I remember there was a, another element to that, that rule, which was uh, if the conversation is intended to be private, right. then it's not illegal for you to listen to it, but it would be illegal to share it. Mm. And this is in the United States. Right. Uh, and, you know, and municipalities and states may have rules that change that, of course. So. Yeah, a good disclaimer there. Don't, this is not yeah, legal yeah, yeah. advice we're giving you. Uh, I, I am not a lawyer. This attorney. is not legal advice. <laughs> uh but, you know, that said, uh, if you were listening to something you weren't supposed to, it's not like they would know. <laughs> because they're radio waves, right? You're just picking them out of the air. They're, they're out there. Um, so, but, I'm talking uh, about the yeah. software involved. That you said that uh, the hardware connects to your USB, it goes into your computer, and the software has to do something. What, what yeah. goes on in there? Well, I, I could probably just demo it if uh, we want, want to attempt a screen share here. Do it. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna we're using Teams here. So how do how do we? Uh, oh, how do I the share top my right corner there is a button that says Share, the little arrow pointing upward. Ah, okay. And then it'll ask you, do you want to share? You probably just want to share one application. You can share an entire screen if you want. I, I will brazenly share an entire screen. There you go. 
Uh, can you see right, it? So w- yep. And this, I'm looking at some some software here. What is this software? Yeah. So uh, this software is called SDR Angel. It's uh, the software I like to use uh, with my software-defined radios. There's a lot of other options. Uh, this one is uh, kind of got a steep learning curve, but it's really full-featured. Like it, it has a lot of capabilities. And uh, what I've done right now is uh, I've got uh, I've got an antenna outside of my house. It's like a two-meter-long uh, fiberglass rod uh, that I have uh, screwed to the side of an old my kid's old playground. My kids are all teenagers and adults now, so they don't use it anymore. But I'm a I'm a lazy dad, and I haven't torn it down yet. <laughs> <Got> it. <laughs> um, and so it's and literally I've got an antenna line running out my uh, window, uh, and the window's just cracked the slightest bit. Right. Um, and um, so it, it and that antenna is optimized for two meter, which is uh, like uh, radio like FM radio range, and and ham radio range. And it's optimized for uh, 70 centimeter, which is another ham radio frequency. And it's for transmission and reception, but we're just receiving with it right now. And what I've done is I have tuned the software defined radio. So that antenna is plugged into the dongle. The dongle is plugged into my MacBook here. And then the software is talking to that MacBook over uh, using some libraries uh, called RTLSDR.DLL, I think, on Windows. And uh, I've tuned it to 162.55 megahertz which is uh, the NOAA uh, weather radio. So if you ever buy one of those little weather radios, this is the, one of the frequencies. This is the one oh, okay. for Columbus, where I live. And, um, and so you can see it's giving you like a little waterfall here of, of the audio. You can kind of see the audio modulation from left to right there. Okay. And um, so I've tuned it to that. Uh, if I add a little component here, we can listen to it. Uh, I'm not demodulating yet. I'm just looking at it. So uh, it's already set to the right one. So here I'm going to take an NFM uh, demodulator. That's for narrowband FM, okay. which is frequency modulation. And now I can hear it in my headphones, but you can't hear it. So I'm going to take my headphones off and let you all hear it. So apparently it's 64 degrees outside. That's way warmer than Chicago. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of freakishly warm this time of year. Uh, I mean, it's February. It's Ohio. It should be way colder than this. Um, but yeah, so that's. Uh, I mean, I, so I'm just picking up this out of the air, just like you would with a like a any other radio you'd have, except that it's feeding into my computer. Wow. Okay. And so, uh, which is kind of neat. I mean, it it kind of feels like a radio with extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, what? It, now this is this is kind of cool. You can listen to stations all over the world, but um, but you can kind of do that through the internet right now. Like you yeah, could, uh, uh, like a, I can listen to radio from the radio stations from California now by just going to their website. But what, what what are people doing, or maybe maybe you're doing this already to take it to the next step? So um, in addition to the audio out there for everyone to listen to, there's data. And so uh, there's all this data being broadcast that, um, by devices and gadgets and ham radio operators and by aircraft and boats and all this stuff. And so uh, you can pick up that data and decode it. And SDR Angel actually will allow you to decode it as well. Um, and what so kind of, what uh, kind of data? Well, so in in the case of uh, APRS, well, let's well, let's just tune to it. One forty four point three nine. We'll see if uh, we get a packet come through. So. Um, APRS is sort of like a ham radio packet uh, radio network okay. uh, where uh, people can broadcast their location along with information about um, what they're doing. Or they ah. can, and it, it, you, see, you see that little thing come across the screen there? That's a little yeah. packet. Oh, okay. um, so it's a me- metadata about your broadcast. Um, it's, it's actually, the data is the broadcast. Oh, and okay. so uh, if you have like um, an asset, like a repeater or a tower or something, it could say, I'm this tower and I'm at this location. It could tell everyone like every 10 minutes that it's there. Or uh, people will build little weather stations. And, you know, those little weather stations you can put on top of someone on your house. Uh, you may have seen these. And these weather stations uh, will broadcast out uh, the weather data over APRS. And then other people can pick it up and, and look at it. And... Um, uh, some people will track their journey, so they'll just turn their radio on and, and turn this feature on, and when they're driving, you can see where they drove. Um, it sounds like IoT. Be, it is kind of a little IoT-like. Um, and um, well, th- there's a couple things about these that are cool. One is is that the uh, the packet 
format is um, base it's called AX25 for amateur X25 and if you uh, remember anything you remember the X25 networking uh, you know I was never good at the OSI network layer thing oh I think I started that for a test one time and yeah 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 exactly got it afterwards <laughs> right um, well uh, AX25 is based off of X25 okay and uh, so it's sending little, little data packets with uh, with like MAC addresses but instead of MAC addresses they use your call sign. Okay. And um, the, the encoding that they're using is the same. Um, they're encoding the audio that's being broadcast over the FM. And uh, it's using the same um, encoding technique that the 1200 baud modem uses. Remember the screechy 1200 baud modems from the uh, late 80s, early 90s? Uh, it's using that same. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of fun to listen to. I, um, but um, like I, I should be able to decode the data here. None of the signals I've gotten here have looked Particularly strong, but we'll see if I can do it. So let's go to packet demodulator, hit apply. We'll let this uh, run and and see if any packets come through with any data in them. And this uh, will turn it from just this pictures on the screen to actual numbers and words. Is that the idea? Yeah, you'll see like who it's from and uh, who it's addressed to. Uh, and okay. the and there's an internet component to this too because these packets then are picked up by certain towers, which will then feed it into the internet. They're they're called I gates or internet gates. Mm -hmm. And then um, so something just went across the screen here. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah. Is it kind of decoded or not? Sometimes we can see them, but they're not strong enough for the decoder to want to actually. Like that one there is not. That one's weak. Is that because uh, is that the reason why it's low contrast, like the light green and dark green? Yeah, maybe maybe I can turn the gain up a little bit. See if that that'll do it. But these these packets also get funneled into the internet, and then uh, so there's a whole internet side of this as well. And you can build services on the internet. There we go. We got one. It happened. Yeah. This is from. Uh, oh, oh, zoom into that. I can't see very well. What is? Or just read it to us. Yeah, it, it's it's always really tiny. I can never get it to read. So it's from November one, Charlie Tango Foxtrot two, uh, dash two. That's their SSID number. Mm -hmm. uh, to aptt four, which I believe is a service. Um, and then there's like extra packet data here that says how to route it. Oh, okay. So you and, could build an application on top of this that took that information and did something useful with it. Well, and because the packet can go into the internet or come or be generated by the internet and be sent out a tower, you can build internet applications that would then generate packets. And there, in fact, there are things like SMS gateways. So I can use my radio to send a text message by sending one of these out. Oh, cool. Or I can, um, like, do a, 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 a look up on someone's call sign and find if there are. Or there's a weather service where I can say, give me the weather information that will respond back over the network with weather information. And so, and it's nice because you could be outside of cell phone range, but, uh, you know, a handheld radio could, you know, can have a decent range, especially if there's a repeater on a tower, on a, on a hill. Or, uh, and this is really cool, um, there is a, one of these repeaters that picks up these packets on the International Space Station. Oh. And so, and you know the International Space Station is going to go ahead over, overhead about twice a day. And so if you're, like, in the middle of Alaska in the wilderness, you still could get a signal to the ISS, and then it would go down, and someone would pick it up. And because it, it has really, it's basically like a really big tower in the sky. Ah. And so you could get, like, a message out that way. Um, so yes, it's actually really cool. It's it, it, there's all this data going out there. I'm I thinking is, about that. The software developer in me is thinking, you know, we could take this and send it to say an Azure service bus and build a logic app and a whole workflow to say, yeah. you know, listen <laughs> for this particular event, and when it happens, then you know, send a rescue team to Alaska. I don't yeah. know. What, <laughs> oh well, I, I'll do you one better. We could gather this all up and put it in Redis. <laughs> put it in Redis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is one thing that's out there. There's there's other data that's out there. Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen here because okay. uh, there we go. Because uh, people don't. Uh, maybe I should have left the screen up. I don't know that anyone wants to see me. Oh, you know, we have a face built for radio. It's perfect. That's right. That's why I hide mine under a beard. Um, <laughs> but um, and actually, let me go ahead and stop the radio here real quick because it is consuming resources on my machine. Yeah. Uh, like your your video has frozen for me, so. <laughs> oh no, I, I think it's being recorded by Teams though, because I still see myself moving. I'm sure we're fine. So, um, 
But um, there's other things that are broadcasting information all the time. Uh, aircraft broadcast their, their location and their heading and um, uh, what flight they are and stuff. And so you can connect to a software-defined radio uh, oh, using nice. various software and see where all the aircraft are in your area. And it'll and plot them on a map. And it's data that comes in. Uh, ships do something similar. So if you live near a port, like say if you're in Chicago, uh, then you could monitor uh, ship traffic on Lake Michigan. Uh, which would be kind of neat. Uh, I did the, yeah. I did that at an event in Louisville, Kentucky. I think it was Code Palooza, and I was able to pick up uh, ships in the Ohio River. Very um, cool. And um, and and there's lots of other odd things that are broadcasting data as well. Um, your gas meter and your water meter uh, will broadcast their meter reading periodically. Interesting. So the and, man does not come to my house anymore. Right. He just drives. He just drives by and gathers up all the data. I did not and know then, this. And, uh, and so uh, I was able to figure out which gas meter was mine because, or which uh, water meter was mine, uh, because the number and I, on my water meter and the number that was reported from the software was the same. And they're like, oh, that, mm. that's the ID for my meter. Mm. But I also saw all my neighbors, but I don't, I don't know whose is whose. Yeah, I'm not sure what you do with that information. I'm sure there's some nefarious uh, yeah, yeah. use for it, but uh, um, using a lot of water over there, Mr. Royce. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this looks like this is uh, this is Mark's one because he's filling up his pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe if uh, if there's a drought going on, sometimes they have water rationing. You could turn in your neighbors based on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the most nefarious thing I can think of. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of odd. You know, it's out there. It's kind of neat. You can pick it up. Um, the... Uh, the, the one that I think is the most uh, odd but kind of fun is that uh, you've got little air pressure sensors in your tires that tell your car when your tires low or when you got a flat because you got these, you know, the hard side walls. You don't necessarily know your tires flat um, and they'll, they'll let you know that you've got low tire pressure. Uh, well, they can't use wires because it's a wheat in a wheel. Right. And so they, they got a little radio in there and uh, you can pick those up. Oh. Um, so cars, you can pick up cars driving by and then. And they, they report like the air pressure and the temperature actually, uh, because hmm. you, you would want both of those bits of data to figure out whether you actually had a flat tire or not. Because you know, they, when it, on a cold day, that air pressure will drop and right, um, that kind of stuff. In fact, there was a I, I heard that uh, one of the early cars to feature this I think was a Volkswagen, and if you parked next to another Volkswagen that had the same sensors, they didn't know how to differentiate. Oh, and, you pick up uh, if your neighbor had a flat tire, right? And then show on your you car, you have a flat tire, yeah. Um, and so you can pick that up. Um, probably the most egregious thing that's being broadcast um, is uh, pagers, uh, hmm. like text those, pagers. Those like, are still a thing, huh? Uh, well, you probably carried one at one point in your career. I'd I imagine when my uh, when one of my sons was uh, being born was was was, was we were expecting a son. Yeah, <laughs> I carried it then. Yeah. Um, well, those are broadcast in the clear. Um, they're not encrypted at all. And so you can pick them up with a software-defined radio and decode them and read them. Uh, and this is certainly the category of something you're not supposed to look at, or, and, but you certainly aren't supposed to share. Um, and um, the most common thing that's being sent over these text pagers... Uh, who, is drug could, deals. Uh, well, I, I have seen some uh, phone numbers come across occasionally, which I suspect are drug deals. <laughs> Uh, but the most pro- common person that still carries a text pager, any guess? Uh, it's not pregnant uh, fathers or <laughs> expecting fathers? It's not expectant fathers, but it is related to that sort of phenomenon. Uh, doctors. Yes. Lots of doctors still have these things. Ah. And there is an insane number of HIPAA violations that are occurring, you know, every Oh, because well, they're, so they're sending out medical information in clear text, sometimes with personally identifiable information as well. Right. And so you see, it's, you know... Uh, you know, um, you know, Mrs. Walther in room 103 is having problems with her, you know, whatever again. So could you please go check on that doctor so-and-so? And, and, oh, sure. Yeah. An insurance company could pick that up and deny coverage to Mrs. Walther. Yeah. For example. Uh, which would be so, evil. So, uh, so, so that, that one's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, there, there, I mean, there's lots of legitimate data. There's lots of interesting data. Um, all sorts of gadgets are broadcasting stuff all the time and um, yeah you can pick it up and look at it and analyze it um, I mean I built a talk around this called tracking aircraft with Redis and software defined radio um, hmm. 
because what I really do in my job is I try and find things that I'm interested in and then shoehorn work into it so that I can do the talks about them for work. Uh, <laughs> so your job uh, is just an excuse for you to do, play with toys all day. Yeah, what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> and so I took the aircraft data uh, from uh, this being broadcast and put it in an event stream and then build a little app that consumed that stream and put them on a map. Oh, very um, cool. Which is actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's kind of... I think we hit a point where uh, I'm going to pause and say, uh, do you have any other questions? <laughs> I had no questions because I, I, everything I've, you've talked today, is, it was new to me. This is a, yeah. an area that I have no experience with. Uh, my only question is, um, where are you speaking next? Um, I think my next talk is at Orlando Code Camp in uh, Orlando. Oh, um, I haven't been I'm, there in years. Yeah, um, it's a good-sized event. It's, it's, usually, uh, uh, it's usually worth the travel there. Um, it was when I did. I've been there three times. Esteban Garcia used to run it, but I'm not, I don't yeah. think he does anymore. And and then after that, I'm I've got a a couple. I'm going to Poland for GCon. Right. Excited. Uh, I haven't been to Poland before, so that should be fun. Neither have I. And so I'm going to Minneapolis, I believe, uh, for another event. I can't I can't remember which one. Is it Open Source North? No, it's not that one uh, also, because like that's in May. Code. It's also a Twin Cities Code Camp, or at least they used to be. I think it's Twin Cities Code Camp, um, and um, and then in May I've got. Uh, well, we'll see what happens, but I know I've got at least two weeks back to back in Europe for NDC Oslo and uh, Techorama Belgium. And, Outstanding. Uh, and um, depending on what happens, I may end up in London or Poland again, or I don't know, or Madrid. I've got. Things that I haven't heard back from yet, so uh, it could end up turning into four weeks in Europe, which is honestly a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally a first world problem you just described. I know, right? <laughs> oh darn! It's just so burdensome. I had to spend four weeks in Europe. <laughs> well, guy, uh, four thank weeks you so is a much. long time not to be sleeping in your own bed, though. <laughs> I know. I, I understand. I, yeah. I, I and I appreciate the time you're spending with us, and I appreciate learning a lot from you today. Uh, happy to share. Um, I w- will say, uh, if, if anyone is a ham radio operator out there and um, is uh, curious about, you know, is watching this, then uh, my call sign is Kilo Echo Eight Victor India Yankee. So uh, feel free to reach out to me. And um, and that this actually got me into ham radio. Um, so listening to these things first was a very good way to then. It's a good first step if you're interested in doing like ham radio for transmission and talking to other people. So. Uh, it turned into me getting cheap Baofeng radios like this and uh, talking with uh, other people in my neighborhood and my, in my well, my region. Uh, so it's a, it's a good gateway um, to a, a broader hobby. Awesome. You stay oh, I want to say one last thing oh, yeah. about, the, about the hobby, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, is that uh, the draw uh, for, for all, all of you techie people out there, uh, the big draw for uh, ham radio and radio in general but particularly ham radio uh, being able to transmit is that um, it's it's a cool technical landscape. So if you like the things, you like you know, it's like I want to learn how all these protocols work and how all this stuff works. Then it's got a great you know collect physical objects, learn how the tech works. It's detail oriented. It's got that aspect which is really fun. Uh, but it's also um, about people because in order to talk on the radio, there's got to be someone to talk to. And so it's a really great way to do both um, something technical and something people-oriented. So I think that's its greatest feature. So I heartily encourage everyone to go check out, get into to radio and ham radio and uh, do cool stuff. I like it. like tech doc conferences. There's tech and there's people. That's right. All right. We're at time. Thanks so much. Cool. The best thing about radio and software-defined radio and all that is that it's a whole bunch of technology that you can explore, and there's all these friends that you will meet on the other side of that technology. You should go check it out.